Hey everyone, how are you doing today? Topic number three with Anna is something I wanted to talk about, and that is her thoughts and my thoughts on the FIRE movement, financial independence, retire early. So, well, Anna, what do you think about that? Uh, I don't know. What is that? An acronym, I guess? I did it. Yes. <laughs> so I, I like the idea, right? It's, mm-hmm. it's creating financial independence and being able to retire early. The, the retirement word is kind of a misnomer. You know, I've kind of changed the word that I use because just because you're retired from a corporate career doesn't mean that you're not working anymore, right? Yeah, but you're point. financially independent from having to work on someone else's schedule for some other company. Mm-hmm. And you get to choose to do what you want with your day and time without regard to money. Yeah, I, I uh, very true. One of the things I got to tell you, I kind of bristle at it and I, I, and I, I didn't, maybe I'm overthinking it. I think the fire movement is sexy. I think it is something people can get behind, but I kind of relate it to my, you know, our story of all these units that you and I have created, right? It very quickly becomes a step too far, right? I want to do that. I want to do that, but that's 10 years down the line. And then mm-hmm. people don't do anything. So what I'm trying to get people that, that are interested in the FIRE movement is, you know what, instead of, instead of talking FIRE and financial independence, why don't we first just talk about having a better financial future? Because gotcha. if we can get people from zero to a better future, then if they choose, they can keep going down the track, which ultimately ends in financial independence. Am I overthinking that? No, but I think I think it's a good warning to the people not to just think, oh, I've got time, I'll just retire early sometime before 65, right? Yeah. You, you want people to take steps today to create better financial freedom, more financial freedom, yeah. being closer to that you know, financial independence. So I think that that's really wise. At the same time, I think we have to have a vision to something that's pretty big mm-hmm. in order for us to keep going when things are hard, right? And so- if we know that that financial freedom, that financial independence is possible and that we can do it much more quickly than we even think we can, Mm -hmm. then Mm -hmm. we have that vision ahead of us to tell us, okay, let's take steps every day to get there. And every day we get closer and closer. So I think it's kind of a balance, you know, you need, you need the vision and you need to understand what's possible because I can tell you, I do have students and I know you do as well who, you know, tell me, okay, I'm going to do this, but, but I don't want to do this because that's probably too big or thinking too far ahead. And I'm like, no, you want to think big. You want to think far ahead because you don't know what you're capable of and you don't know how easily it can be done. Right. Mm. Not quick and easy, the easy button, right. We've talked about, it's not easy, but it's not that complicated. Right. Mm -hmm. If you don't, have the vision for what's possible, you'll very rarely take the steps and have the confidence that you can get there. So I like to talk about both. I want you to create financial freedom. I want you to create financial independence because it's the thing that allows you to live life by design, to live your hours and your time the way that you want to. And until you reach financial independence where you don't have to exchange your time to be to get a paycheck from someone else, you'll never be able to live your life completely by design and be in control of your time. So if you want the time freedom, you want the life by design, you've got to be making steps to create that financial freedom that allows you to say goodbye to the job. Got it. Maybe it's because our stories start very different because I think like when you started going down this journey before you really had one, you really could, your goal was be home with your baby. So financial freedom, right? That was, that was on the list. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. So when I started, it wasn't on the list. I didn't even know it was possible, frankly. Right. I just knew I wanted a better future. Right. If I got one really for me, it was, if I can get to four, which is all I was thinking about in the beginning, I didn't have a role model. I didn't, I just didn't know. Right. Right. Maybe that's where I'm coming from is for me, it was just the next step and the next step. And yeah, it, it was until year 10 that I was really thinking about true freedom, which is kind of funny. Well, I can say I, I kind of mirrored that too, right? Mm-hmm. I wanted to desperately be home with my baby mm-hmm. and I wanted to find any way that I could to do it. But I knew that in order to do it, I had to somehow replace the income coming in for my job, right? right? And so I knew I don't want to work for a job that keeps me from being home with my child. Therefore, I need to find some other way to make money, right? Mm-hmm. And we we dabbled before we figured out this whole I can buy enough properties to really retire, but it could take me a while. Right. And so 
I kind of got frustrated that it wasn't quick like HGTV told me it would be, right? Yeah. We flipped the house, we lost money. My husband said, we're not doing that again, yeah. right? So then <laughs> that hurt. So <laughs> that hurt. Um, we had a tenant that went well, right? But at that point, it was just like, Kent, you've got to get home. You've got to start your own business so you can make enough money so I can stay home. Mm -hmm. So then it was, let's go to entrepreneurship. You know, we gave up the real estate thing because my husband didn't like it because we failed the first time. So I didn't really get it. I step by step said, well, let's try entrepreneurship. And then, oh, the market crashed and the business almost failed and healthcare changed and AIG almost went under and the economy almost collapsed. And how else can I have financial freedom where I'm not dependent on mm. a business, healthcare, a job, the economy? I mean, you have to depend on the economy, but it was like the aha that the only thing that's still going well are these few rentals that I bought to incrementally reduce my lifestyle expenses by letting tenants cover my expenses. Yeah. So I got it incrementally. I didn't get it. Okay. You know, up front. It took me a while. Yeah. So I think, yeah, it's very similar, right? For me, it, again, I think it was year eight or year 10 where I suddenly looked at what was, because I was always bust my ass during the day look for the next deal and secure capital. That was what I did. Olivia yes. did the books, right? She did all the hard stuff, all of that stuff. So again, divide and conquer. It wasn't until I looked up and we had a talk about really where we were. And oh, by the way, we haven't taken any money out of our personal accounts in like a year and a half. I'm like, really? I didn't know that. That's probably pretty good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I had kind of a light bulb moment like that too, Michael. So I did get it like, okay, I need to buy more rental property. Like that's the way that I'm going to create financial freedom. And I read the one book, I think I told you, Dave Lindell's Multifamily Millions. And I was like, whoa, this is what's possible. Now I got to figure out how to do it when I don't have money and banks won't lend to me because I work for AIG and had a lot of debt, right? Um, so it was, it was figuring out how can I still do it, right? But even, so my goal was I need to buy at least 12 units a year for the next five years to get 60 units to have the financial freedom number. Oh, so yeah. once I had that five-year plan, it was very much exactly like you said, tick the boxes one at a time. Yeah. Don't worry yeah. about it. If you just keep doing it, you'll get there. Um, but I didn't have that aha moment. Like now I can go bigger and do more and I'm going to have freedom of my time and all this stuff. Um, or how far I had really gotten. Cause I was just looking at, okay, that I got this number of units. I got this number of units, but I didn't touch any of that money. So yeah. to your point, we were only living on my income. We didn't touch any of the money. So while I was tracking the numbers and I knew like I had a spreadsheet, okay, now it's this much coming in a month. And when we get the next one, it's going to be this much. And I had ticking away how long until but I really didn't even realize what our net worth was and yeah. quite how much cash flow we had coming in because it was all sitting there and I wasn't touching it. Yeah. So when I one day when I had to do a PFS for a new bank, I was like, oh, <laughs> wow, I am making progress faster exactly. than I think as I'm ticking off the box one rail at a time. Like I've made big progress better than I realized, right? Because it wasn't about the equity and exactly all the cash flow. It was just, I need X number of units that bring in at least X dollar, you know, $300 a month per unit. And then I'll get there. Yeah. It was an yeah. aha moment that this really worked. I'm almost there. And wow, now I can go so much further, so much faster. So when I say fire, and I don't use that term very often, but when I say you want to develop financial freedom, I want to help people fast track that aha moment. So yes. they're not just you know, thinking they're grinding and this is going to take forever and I'll never get there. And then they give up. I want them to see it's possible. And here's how you do it most quickly, most safely, really one rental at a time. Right. Yeah. yeah for me, it's all about, again, I get asked about fire all the time, right? Again, both of us retired in our forties. Um, so we qualify, I think, I think that's early, right? 20 years, 20, in your case, 22 yeah. or 23 years early. Mm -hmm. And, um, for me, it's just about the FI. It's about financial independence. And, and it's, yes. you know, I think too much of the FIRE movement is sacrifice, like truly sacrificing. Um, I think you got to watch quality of life, right? You, tomorrow's promise yeah. to no one. Um, can't be wasteful. But yes. yeah, it is that, you know, let's just do one at a time. And, you know, well, we'll for me, it's zero to one. 
one to four, right? Go from having one to four, then four to 10. And then after 10, whatever you want to do. Uh, that's what yeah. I yeah. Exactly. And it's back to that again, that, you know, live below your means so that you can work to expand your means. And if you just do that every day, yeah. how can I live yeah. below my means today? Be patient and give up a couple of, of wants. And so that I can spend the time in that same money, yep. expanding my means, then you have a good balance of not being a slave to it. Cause trust me for years, I was a slave to it. I mean, it was every night, every weekend, every moment till two o'clock in the morning. Once my mm -hmm. kids were down, I'm looking for properties and grinding. We didn't take vacations. We didn't yeah. have time. Right. That's so true. I finally was like, okay, enough. I've got to enjoy life while I'm doing it. And so it's a very fine balance. Enjoy, have a plan for when and what you're going to splurge on. Right. And everything else, you know, just get what you need. Don't, don't go crazy and, and find ways to cut costs here and there so that you can expand your means. I'm glad you brought that up. One of the big mistakes I have in my book is I didn't celebrate the small victories, right? Whether that was, I mean, I don't have a picture of me standing in front of our first purchase, right? I'm like, damn it. How silly is that? And uh, yeah, celebrate the small wins. Don't, don't go nuts. I mean, it could just be a walk around the block where you talk about it, right? Take a take yeah. a picture with your phone. Maybe if you get a little bigger, a bottle of wine at dinner. I mean, have those touchstones. And because um, I wish I had some of those memories where I could go look at that picture or that thing and go, that's number 50, that's number 75 or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. yeah, for sure. For sure. Very, very cool. So thank you for doing this. This is always fun. I loved our conversations this week. Thanks so much, Michael. Thank you.